Hi everyone, welcome back to our English lesson. With me, I have Jeffro Rachel Besedeno from Wurschko Rustenburg with the other two students, Marli Kutsia and Leila Briz, um, as well as me, Romofila Dube, who all come from Wurschko Rustenburg. And today we're about to um, study the poem Death that Jeffro Rachel will take us through. Hello, guys. Let me quickly share my screen with you. Um, today's poem is a rather short one. It's not too difficult also. Okay, are you able to see the screen? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. The poem is called Death and it's written by Anonymous because it was actually translated from a Welsh song. Um, they sang this song and it was translated into this poem. The type is a ballad because it tells us a story hey, and it can be sung. Now the subject matter is usually about love, death, war, bravery, adventure and action. The rhythm has a strong beat and often quatrains are used. People, these are all characteristics of the poem that you are about to see. Okay. The theme is about the inevitability of death. Now inevitability means um, it cannot be avoided. We are all going to die someday. What are some ways that you can think of that people have tried to avoid death? Ma'am, I think by isolating themselves from the world or just um, trying to avoid any contact with human, with the human or a anything like that. Yes, it's pretty much what we are doing at the moment. Hey, we are self-isolating to try and avoid death or contracting a deadly disease. Um, but that actually makes sense for now, but we can't keep doing that forever and expect to live forever. Hey, people have um, f found cures for diseases. They have they exercise often, they eat the correct foods, all to extend life and to avoid death. Okay. Now, this poem is about the um, futility of trying to run away from death, that it can't be avoided no matter what you do. You can go for a jog every day and then one day on your jog be hit by a car. Hey, the story is both amusing and frightening. Now, let me read the poem to you quickly. One night, as I lay on my bed, and sleep on fleeting foot had fled, because no doubt my mind was heavy with concern for my last journey, I got me up and called for water, that I might wash and so feel better. But before I wet my eyes so dim, there sat death on the bowl's rim. I went to church that I might pray, thinking sure he'd keep away. But before I got onto my feet, there sat death upon my seat. To my chamber then I hide, thinking sure he'd keep outside. But though I firmly locked the door, death came from underneath the floor. Then to see I rowed a boat, thinking surely death can't float. But before I reached the deep, death was captain of the ship. Okay, now one of the characteristics of a ballad is that it can be sung. Now, do you know that song that Spur sings you on your birthday? Do you know the one I'm talking about? Uh, I don't know, but I've been told. Okay, mm. so you can sing this poem on that rhythm. One night as I lay on my bed and sleep on fleeting foot had fled because no doubt my mind was heavy with concern for my last journey. Okay, people, that's just an easy little rhythm to which this poem can be sung. But do you see how the poem lends itself to having a beat, to having a rhythm? Um, that is one of the characteristics of a ballad and why this poem fits that characteristic so well. Also, if we have a look at these characteristics, it's narrative. It tells a story. In other words, it tells a story about this guy who tried to run away from death. The subject matter is usually about love, death, war, bravery, adventure, action. This subject in this poem, death. It has a strong beat. Usually quatrains are used in this case as well. 
There's a fixed, fixed rhyme scheme. In this case, you saw the rhyme scheme as well. And it was translated from a Welsh song to English. Okay. Now let's have a look at the title. When you heard the title, Dube, when you announced it, what did you think it was going to be about, the poem? I thought it was going to be about somebody who just is thinking about how he's one day going to die or um, when he's going to die, maybe. Yes, okay, so somebody thinking about death. Marley, what did you expect? Um, Ma'am, I expected um, a heavy poem of somebody that doesn't really know what to expect. They are scared or something like that. Yes. We, the last thing that we expect when we see the title Death is this amusing little story about someone who tried to run away from death. Because trying to run away from death is a little bit ridiculous. Hey? Just like the poem is sometimes a little bit ridiculous. We'll get to that just now. Okay, the title indicates what the poem is about. Yes, it's about death. However, the light tongue in cheek tone is unexpected. And do you see that death is spelled with a capital letter? It is personified as though death is a person. When you think about death as a person, what do you see in your imagination, Layla? Ma'am, I see like the Grim Weeper, a skeleton with um, like a black cloak and a, not a sword, but something yes, that really, people. yes, ma'am. Yes, we think of death, this skeleton ghost-like figure in this black tattered robe with a hood hey, and you can't see his face properly and this little sickle that he holds. We think of the grim reaper when death is personified and that's fine. You can see this little death in your imagination. Now the poem starts, one night as I lay on my bed. Now this poem starts just like any average story would. One night, once upon a time, hey, it starts like a typical story. The setting is in the narrator's bed. He's lying in his bed and sleep on fleeting foot had fled. Okay, so sleep is also personified. He can't sleep, in other words. Why not? Because he was worried about death. Okay, do you see the alliteration there? At sleep on fleeting foot had fled. The repetition of the F sound imitates the sound of shuffling feet, of sleep running away. <laughs> okay. Because no doubt my mind was heavy. Was his brain literally heavier than usual? No. It's meant figuratively. Hey, his mind was heavy with thoughts, with worries, with concern. Concern means worry for my last journey. People, what is your last journey that you are going to take? Ma'am, I think um, last journey refers to the last breath, the last um, thing you're going to do and everything that everybody surrounding you, the last of your, yes ma'am. Yes, exactly, your death. Hey. So a journey is when you go from one place to another. We take journeys to the grocery store. We take a journey on vacation to the sea. So his last journey will be his death because it's the last time that he is going to exchange one location for another, okay? One place for another place. People, this is a metaphor, but also euphemism. Do you remember the term euphemism? Yes, that is when you say something softer, hey, instead of with concern for my death, he says with concern for my last journey. So it's definitely a softening of the word death, but it's also a metaphor comparing death to a journey, hey, some place that you go. Concern, we already said, me means worry. Why was he so worried about his death? Why do you think? When would a person think a lot about his death? When they're old and they have 
yeah, when they yes. are old now. When they are old or sickly, hey, or just plain neurotic. Then he says, I got me up and called for water. So he was lying in his bed and he couldn't sleep because he was stressing about dying. So what did he do? He got up and called someone, perhaps a servant, perhaps his wife, we don't know. He called for water. He gave up on trying to sleep, so he got up and asked for water, that I might wash and so feel better. So in your mind, I want you to see this image of this oldish guy lying in his chamber, his bedroom, with this big bed, and he's unable to sleep. He's all nervous. Perhaps he's wearing a sleeping gown and a cap as well because it's so old-fashioned. And then he says, servant, bring me some water. And then he wants to wash his face with this bowl of water that the servant brings him. And he says, but before I wet my eyes so dim, before he even got to wash his face, they sat death on the bowl's rim. Okay, so can you see my glass of water here? Are you able to see it? Okay, so here's my glass of water. Here is the rim, the top part of the bowl like this. And death sat there. Little death is sitting here upon the rim of the bowl. So what did he want to do? What was his plan? He wants to wash death away. Okay, but before he could wet his eyes so dim, what does dim mean? Ma'am, dim is like the opposite of bright. It's not um, very clear. It isn't, yeah. Exactly. Yes, when you put your lights on dim, you don't see them or they don't shine as brightly. Hey, why would his eyes be dim? Maybe he's old and he can't see that well anymore. Maybe it's just because he was lying in the dark, but his eyes were dim. And what he did was he washed his face. Um, but before he could do that, there sat little death on the bull's rim. Okay. People, this note is going to be repeated throughout the poem. Every time but tells us how death outwits him. He tries to run away, but there's death again. So his first plan was to wash death away. Excessive hygiene, hey, thinking if we keep clean enough, we won't die. The next part, where does he try to escape death? He goes to church okay now can you escape death by being a christian no people physical death the death of our bodies here on earth you can't escape by being a christian all of us will die hey so what he did he went to church that he might pray what does he want to pray for he wants to pray that he won't die hey that he will um not die soon thinking sure he'd keep away but before i got onto my feet they sat death upon my seat okay so before he could even get up leaving church they sat death upon his seat so what does that tell us that you can't try and pray death away Death is going to happen whether you are a Christian or not, okay? People are not talking about eternal life here that you get after your physical death. I'm talking about physical death, okay? This is what the poet is talking about. You cannot escape physical death by being a Christian, okay? Christians also die. Otherwise, how would you go to heaven? Okay, but tells us death out but tells us death outwits him every time. It's the same note. There sat death upon my seat. Death is personified as someone in church sitting on his seat as he is about to leave. Okay. So how has death been personified so far? Ma'am, um I think he sees death as some, some a person or a thing that doesn't leave him alone that always follows him no matter where he goes or what he does or what he, he does to try to stop it because it will never leave his side exactly exactly people 
it's like that for all of us. Hey, death is always there. The threat of death is always there. As I sit here, my ceiling could collapse on me or um, my electricity can for some reason go haywire and electrocute me. So we can always be aware of death or we can ignore death until it actually happens. OK, that's the message of the poem, basically. To my chamber, then I hide. What is a chamber? A type yes. of room. Yes, his bedroom. So he hurried to his chamber, to his bedroom. Hide is a contracted form of hurried. Um, the poet shortened the word to rhyme with outside. It's called poetic license. That is when you um, want to bend a language or a spelling rule in order to make your poem, the rhythm or the rhyme fit better. Okay. So he hurried to his room, thinking sure he'd keep outside, thinking he could escape death by being a hermit, by just locking himself in his room, basically. But though I firmly locked the door, death came from underneath the floor. Death is not kept out by a locked door. Hey, you can't keep death out by any human means, like locking yourself up or trying to eliminate all dangers. It will still come in a way that you are unprepared for, like underneath the floor. In this case, death has supernatural powers or is superhuman. Okay, that is how death is personified in this stanza. I want you to write there with your notes. Death came from underneath the floor that death is personified as someone who is superhuman or has supernatural powers. Okay, did you write that down? Then the last stanza. To the sea, I rode a boat. Okay, that's, uh, sorry guys, that's wrong. It should be to the sea, I rode a boat, not the to sea, I rode a boat. What does he do? What is his last step for escaping death? He wants to escape everything. He goes to sea. Hey, in the olden times, um, when you wanted to escape your life, you went to sea, you went on a boat, became a pirate even maybe. Okay, thinking surely death can't float. So Marley, what was his plan for escaping death in this instance? Um, he thought that if he went to sea, death would not be able to get to him because there would be water surrounding him. Yes. Exactly. Death wouldn't be able to catch him because there would be water surrounding him. Hey. But before, uh, before I reached the deep, death was captain of the ship. Okay. Now, this last line of the poem is personification. Yes, death was the captain of the ship. Death was in charge of his destiny. Do you think that that was his own fault? that death was in charge of his life? Ma'am, I don't think um, it is his own fault, but he should have, should, should have known his time will come and it will be um, when he least expected it will be. And I think yes. um, trying to escape death only makes the matter worse because when you need to die, you're going to die. Yes. Exactly. And when you spend your whole life fearing death and thinking about death all the time, you give death all the power. You make death the captain of your destiny. Hey, it's like that saying that um, you only live once, which is not true. You only die once. You live all the other days. Hey, um, And putting death in this position where it is the master of your destiny is not a good idea because you're going to waste your life thinking about death. Now, this is what the poem is about. It's the futility of worrying about the inevitable, of worrying about something that is going to happen either way. Like, for example, these women who spend all their money and all their time trying to look younger 
It's inevitable. We all grow older. Hey, the alternative is not growing older, meaning dying. So it's futile. It's an it's useless. OK, just like worrying about death all the time is a waste of your life. It's futile and it's useless because it's going to happen whether you are worried about it or not. Now, that doesn't mean to say you should cut out your car's safety belts and um, stop social distancing and just go out and be as reckless as you possibly can. Obviously not. We must all take a few. Um, we must practice common sense in order not to unnecessarily die. Hey, but we mustn't spend all our time thinking about death because then we're going to be like the narrator. And that is the message of the poem is death is inevitable. So it's futile to worry about it all the time. You're just going to waste your life. OK, people, are there any questions? None. OK. Um, let me unshare my screen quickly. Where am I now? There we go. Okay, we are done then.